How can you determine and set mobile home park lot rents in 2022? In this video, you're gonna learn exactly what I do and how to avoid the mistakes that could cost you a lot of money. Real estate investing is risky, so we do everything that we can to minimize risk and maximize the return. Effectively raising rents is one of the best ways to do this. But how do you calculate what lot rent should be in your mobile home park? Is there room to raise rent in the trailer park that you're looking to invest in? What can your tenants afford and what's actually fair? Make sure to watch until the end so you don't miss the biggest mistake that you could make when you're doing your lot rent comps. So when I'm looking at a mobile home park and I'm just trying to quickly determine what that lot rent should be in that market, I use a rule of thumb that's kind of a back of the napkin strategy. What I'll do is I'll look up one bedroom apartments in that area and I'll figure 50% of that one bedroom apartment rent. That gives me an idea of what the lot rent should be, but I'm not gonna necessarily use that as a number in my modeling or in my performance. So what I do is I take the apartment rents from maybe B and C apartments in the area, I throw them in a spreadsheet, and then I average them out. And then that's the number that I use for the apartment rent that I'm gonna split in half. When you're doing this, you need to make sure that the efficiency studio apartment rents are at least $550 in that market. If they're less than $550, then you're probably gonna have a hard time converting that park or running that park as a lot rent community because the rents in that area are just too low for that. So those are some quick reference tools, but when you're ready to figure out what the lot rent should be in your market, you need to actually spend time and look at real comparables in the area. The way that you do that is you go to places like Zillow, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and ultimately you should be calling all of the mobile home parks in that market. And you should create a spreadsheet that tracks every single community, how far away they are from your subject community, as well as you need to track what's included in the rents, meaning your utilities, your trash, lawn maintenance. If anything else is included in that rent, you need to make sure that that's included in your spreadsheet and you're paying close attention to that because you need to offset your rent based on what's included in your lot rent. One big problem that I come across quite often when I'm looking at communities that are in markets that maybe aren't really large is that I look up all the mobile home parks and the phone numbers either don't work or the people never call me back and their managers never answer the phone. So in that case, what I have to do is I have to go drive the communities in the area and find residents that are sitting out on their porch or a manager that's walking around. And I just ask them what the lot rent is and what's included. But that's a trick that unfortunately you're gonna have to use in many cases because our industry is not always up to date and people don't always have good voicemail systems or great managers that are gonna return phone calls like they should be doing. When I'm trying to figure out what the average rents are in an area just really quickly, I'll go to bestplaces.net and if I wanna get actual rental comps for apartments, then I'll go to apartment.com or I'll go to rent.com. By the way, be sure to click subscribe on this channel so that you stay tuned to all the mobile home park investing content that I'm putting out both for newer investors as well as experienced investors. And make sure to click like so then YouTube knows that this is the kind of content that you're into. So I've thrown out a lot of websites that you can go to in order to find rental comps and market data. Drop in the comments below which ones you prefer to use when you're looking up comparables. Now that you have an idea of what the market rents should be, you're gonna to wanna to test that theory. And you're gonna do that by running test ads on places like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and the newspaper, just to see what kind of pull you get from the real public. Now it's really important that when you do this, you make these ads look real. If it sounds too professional, or you've got professional looking stock photos, people aren't gonna take them seriously and they're probably gonna think it's a scam. So it's really important to make these ads look like a real seller with terminology that a real seller would use. You can get ideas by actually going on these sites and looking what other sellers are putting in their ads. It's really important that as you get leads coming in, whether it's through phone calls or emails, that you track those leads because you're gonna learn your ratio. And I can't give you an exact rule of thumb for this because every market is different. But if you wanted to start out with a number, you could maybe say that for every 10 calls that you get, you're gonna get one showing. And then out of every 10 showings or five showings, you're gonna get a sale. And what you can do is you can kind of gauge how long it's gonna take you to sell the number of homes that you need to sell in that property. If you're not getting the lead flow that you hoped for, then the first thing that you need to do is ask yourself, did you run the ads in the right places? 
See, in some markets, Craigslist is gonna do better. In others, Facebook Marketplace will do the best. And in others, local newspaper will get the most pull. So in that case, you need to run ads in all of those locations to make sure that people are actually seeing your ad. The next reason that you're not getting enough leads is because there's either not demand for that type of housing in that market, or the lot rents are too high in your ad. And in that case, you need to either adjust down the rent or recognize that it's not a market that you wanna invest in. Regardless of the results that you get, you need to believe the results. If your results are great, now you know that you've got demand. If the results aren't great, believe it and don't go buy the park expecting that you're gonna be able to push rents higher than anybody else or higher than what the demand says you can. If the community that you're buying has a high percentage of park owned homes as rentals, what you're gonna to wanna to do is run the test ad at the lot rent rate that you're gonna be bringing it to and not at the current park owned home rents. You don't care what the park owned home rent is right now because it's going to be changing in the future when you sell those homes off. One of the best parts about buying a community with park owned homes in place is that you can now set the lot rent at full market rent day one when you sell that home. You don't have to incrementally bring the rent up to market because they move in at full market rent. Now for existing lot rent residents, you need to incrementally raise the rents up to market. You don't wanna go from $100 to $500 all in one bump. You're gonna lose a lot of residents if you do that. Additionally, it's really, really important that once you close on that property, you make improvements before you increase the rent. If you don't, you're going to have a lot of very upset people because all they think you're doing is being a slumlord and jacking up rents without fixing and improving the property first. Since rents have been increasing at pretty rapid rates across the country over the last few years, there's a lot of opportunity to buy communities that have rents that are well below market. This happens because community owners may not be keeping up with those increases each year, and then they get very far behind over, you know, call it five years. Now, when you buy these communities, you need to just make sure that you know where market rent is and it takes some time. You're gonna spend a good amount of time doing the research that we've talked about to nail down what those rates should be. Now, where you can get really hurt in all this is if you don't do your homework and run those test ads that we talked about and you still model out rent increases that aren't affordable in that market. You're gonna buy that property, you're gonna run the ads, you're gonna expect to sell homes and nobody's gonna call you. And now you've got a real problem. Hey, check out the episode on the screen that's all about on-site due diligence that you need to be doing when you're buying a mobile home park.